Righto, welcome back guys. Another episode and it's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all those mums out there. To my mum and to Beck. Um, yeah, I know, I'm out in the boat on my own. But it is early, give me a break. And all I'm trying to do is get the best Mother's Day present I can. Beck's requested flathead for dinner. So who am I to argue, mate? Hey? It's five o'clock in the morning. I'm out here and I'm gonna flick a few plastics around. See if I can't get her a Mother's Day present. So, ease up on me. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you know how I go. But this episode, we're gonna run you through oh, close to an hour of the good stuff from Port Hedland to Broome. And um, mate, you gotta get over there. The West Coast is our favorite spot. Even when I'm putting these little longer eps together, I get frothing about the footage and the places we went. So, hope you're enjoying these. Won't be long now till lockdown's over. We got some big plans. We got the tinny, we got the new truck, and we got a new van. It's gonna have some epic vids coming your way, some great spots we've never been before. But for now, settle in, grab a few frothies, and enjoy the next hour of this while I go and catch some flathead for Mother's Day. Oh yes, Beck's gonna be happy. We've got a nice little flatty on the crossfire off the flats. He took it out of about oh, 10 centimeters of water, I reckon. Off the surface too, that was sick. Oh, you rip, ah. Look at that, Let's see if he stops flicking around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's on the bottom of the boat. Oh. oh. Beck's gonna be happy with Mother's Day dinner. You little ripper, hey? I'll put him on the mat to show you how big he is. <laughs> oh, I'm so stoked, I'm not gonna get in trouble. Yes, 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 yes. 45 centimetre flatty. So, guess who's having flatbed for dinner? Me. Mother's Day. I'm Happy stoked. Mother's Day, dear. Thank you. Go, hey, welcome back to another episode. This one's gonna be a bloody ripper and we are heading from Port Hedland to Broome. So it's a big stretch, but there's usually not too much in there to see and a lot of people just hop, skip and a jump to like Pardu Station, 80 Mile, maybe Barn Hill and then into Broome. So we're gonna show you a bit of a different way. We're gonna go in and out a few times to get to a few cool spots. We're at one now, we're just about to pull up. I'll get out and show you around. Might be a long episode this one, depends how many good campsites we find. But um, it's gonna be something different, something to check out, and something to break up that drive between Port Hedland and Broome. Let's roll. Oh, this looks all right, mate. This place is called, what's it called? Split Rock. Split Rock. Because Free camp. <laughs> it's a split well, I'm rock guessing, yeah, there's little. like a little split rock on top. Yeah. It's gonna be a nice sunset out here. It's only about 40 k's north of, where were we? Port Hedland. Uh, but there's no signage, hey, so make sure you find it on Wiki Camps and then hit the directions to take you on Google Maps and look mm. for the turn off. It's just a little dirt track that shoots off the highway. And you can scoot in here. It looks like there's plenty of room. And uh, totally right, we'll, free. we'll have a campfire tonight, sit around. Uh, yeah, I'd love to have a beer, but guess what? I'm dry halfway July. through dry July. It's absolutely killing me, but I feel brilliant. So I'm gonna keep, keep going. See if I can't make it. Uh, I'm another, not doing dry July. 16 days. No, this piss wreck would be able to handle it. Hey? No, I'm not a piss wreck. Alcohol. I Loves honestly, it. I reckon in the last two weeks I've had two days where I've had a drink. And how much did you drink on that day? Way too much. <laughs> well, this looks bloody nice, dear. Split rock. How nice is it? And it's bloody free. It's, it's pretty good, isn't it? So nice. Look at the colours. Sunset's just gone down. Well, the sun's just gone down. Colours over there. It's pretty bloody And when nice. the sun was going down, those rocks were like bright red. It was beautiful. What's up, bud? And the rock up at the top. There's, oh, there's a little one up there too, a little yeah. split. Yeah. You might have heard in the It's pretty cool. You would have seen, I just put the drone up and you can see there's like three of them, like one, two, yeah. three of these big mounds as the sun's going down. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's really huh? good. If, uh, if, I was, if I was allowed to have a beer, I'd be about six deep, I reckon. Oh, but absolutely. Anyway, I'm, I'm not. I'm trying to. Day 14, I'm doing all right. 
What's for dinner? Right, seriously, check this. Oh yeah. Lamb, bacon, sweet potato, onion, capsicum. I don't know what the recipe was, I just made it up because that's all we had. <laughs> but this thing here is a ripper, man. The kids are spewing because I used their marshmallow buddy fire sticks. <laughs> so they couldn't have marshies, but look at that. Oh, sizzle, sizzle. You know the good thing about this is that you can easily unhook it and lift it higher or lower. So as your fire dies or you're trying to cook something to temp and not burn the crap out of it, you can actually lift it up to get it away from the flame and that. I've done, what we did last time, chicken skewers, remember? It yeah, food. yeah. That was brilliant. That was so yum. Just chicken, it was just plain, yeah. Uh, yeah, it had like Oh, marinade. Yeah, yeah, it was so yummy. Ooh. Anyway. Yeah, we're good. gonna get a bit of fried rice happening and that's our dinner. Two. You haven't. How many are you going to have? Oh, I was going to say, I thought that was one. I was like, yes, two for me. <laughs> two, you have the two big ones. Dirty gold. Mm, I, don't, I reckon I'll struggle eating one. Nah. There's a lot of meat there, hey? I'd nail that. God, it looks good. Oh, I can't wait. Got a good appetite. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you a look at the access road. This is going into Coongan's Pool. It's like a well graded track. Pretty well looked after by the look of it, but it's not signposted. I drove straight past it and then halfway up the range before we turned around, didn't I? So anyway, just make sure you got it on Wiki Camps and um, follow the satellite and you'll see the little turn off. There's a parking bay on one side of the road and then a little dirt road through the gate to get out the other side. So here we go. We've had mates tell us about this one. They live in Port Hedland and they stopped in and checked it out on the way back from the Marble Bar races a couple of weeks ago. And they reckon it's pretty mint. There's a, wet, a rope swing there, babe. I know, I can't Freshwater wait. swimming hole. The pool the looks beautiful. Well, the pool. The yeah. swimming hole looks beautiful. And it's all part of this, um, like, Dulina Gorge is on the campsite over here. And then, yeah, so it's all part of this one little gorge that runs through here. And, uh, yeah, good. Hopefully. It's a bit sparse on the old firewood sort of thing, but oh, hopefully we can find something and we can have a campfire tonight. We're at a crossroads. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. I reckon we hook left. Yeah. Let's roll. <laughs> Uh, mate, I'm stoked at the moment because we've been pulled up sort of on and off Port Hedland Caratha. We haven't been done, we haven't done too much exploring, right? So it's funny, hey, and also I've had a month off the beer, so I'm excited to have one this Sabi. But check this out. This is the little spot we found between Port Hedland and Broome. Well, and Marble Bay. You've got a detail or detour inside a bit. Set up here. Ooh, look at this. Hey, cars parked in. Fridge here, you can drive up and down. There's a few spots to go all the way along. There's a couple, some crackers up here with the rope swing, but um, they're taken, which is a bugger. But anyway, this one here, ooh wee. Hey, what do you reckon, miss? How good is it? Ah, look, mate, we've got our own Everything little fire pit. It's made good with the water view. Ah, and we're right back down and in here. She was a fair mission to try and level the van out. Yeah. We're still a bit on the sideways. It's doable though. In there, but she's all good. And then, uh, look at that, and you can swim here. Hey, we're gonna duck down here. You can see where the cattle have been walking up and down the tracks here. But it is beautiful. Look at this. The sun's gonna go down through these trees. We're gonna cook on the fire tonight. Got some fresh reef fish from a mate in Port Hedland. Hooey. And what do you got? What's we, this? Uh, this what is the this? Whistler Wines. They are schmick. If you're after a good drop, check this one out. It's called the Fruit Tingle and I'm hooked. I'm no joke, I'm hooked. Hey, I'll tell you. They're so good. A bottle only lasts about three glasses <laughs> and then I've got to put it at bed. It's hopeless. Stop anyway, it! This is it. Pumped. Stoked. Yes! Chasing mountains I can't climb Holding out for heroes in the night I find myself here in the dark We learn to fight and learn who we are But I am raised up to face the stars Full of light And we are Welcome to Marble Bar, hey? Probably the best spot in town to get a bit of a view. Just up the top where the big, I'm guessing it's the town water supply. We're camped down the bottom here. You can see the caravan park down here. Look around town, it's uh, not that big. 
always thought Marble Bar was a bit big, you know, but honestly, there's not too much around. Uh, but I reckon it'd be a pretty bloody nice sunset up here at the water tank. Look at that, hey? No matter where you go in WA, you can always find somewhere that looks friggin' fantastic at sunset. So, tucked away down in here, and I'll tell you what, you know we told you on the way in, into town that it's Australia's hottest town. Well, far out, it's the hottest we've been for a while, and it's still winter, so they're pretty much right. Good old marble bar. She's a stinker. Alrighty, we are out of Marble Bar. Pretty intentional that we ended up staying here, but the Caribbean Park was not too bad. 22 bucks for an unpowered side, a bit of grass. But what I plan on doing is um, taking the kids to the pool, and lo and behold, <laughs> the bloody thing had no water in it. Super hot yesterday, so we decided just to park up in the Caravan Park. But where are we off to now? Uh, we are going to a place called Coppins Gap, which uh, you'll find it on Wikicamps. I've just punched it in uh, to get directions on Google Maps, and it's about 60 k's out of town, back towards the coast, which is the right direction. <laughs> um, so we're going to stay there. We've had some mates stay there, and it looks pretty bloody nice. It's a Sunday Arvo, so hopefully we should get the place to ourselves. Um, we'll show you the track in the campsite, and then tomorrow we'll be heading out of town. I reckon towards our uh, Pardew Station, mate. It's a ripper. So let's go. Copland's Gap. Uh, see you later. Marble Bar, the hottest town in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. It's, it's, it's all right. not much here. I wouldn't. Um... If you've got the time, like we have, yeah. come and check it out. It's pretty yeah. nice. Um, but if you're on a time frame, I reckon uh, yeah. just stick to the coast, mate. Yeah. Ah, right. Oh, so about 30 k's out of Marble Bar, you'll find Bamboo Creek Road, uh, and you've got to hang a right. Just down here. Goes to dirt straight away. I'm not sure what the condition's like, but we'll just poke along. It's about 35 k's down here to get to where we're gonna camp, which is Coppins Gap. So anyway, we'll poke along. If I have to stop and drop my tires, I will, but see how we go. Hopefully it turns back into bits. That's it all. <laughs> Rightio, only six k's to go, and look at this. There's the gap. Oh, the road just got the roughest it's ever been. Uh, look at that, can you see the gap? Yeah, the road up until now has been bloody smooth. I was just about to say it's good, and then it's just all gone to shit. I think I read on Wikicamp. Ah, so. it's getting pretty rough, sorry. Sorry, no, I think I read on Wikicamp the last, the last six k's are rough. Look at the size of it. Oh man, the sun is gonna drop down somewhere over here and it's just gonna be an insane arvo. Not too many level campsites up here. She's sort of all on, it's pretty flat, but it's all on a bit of a lean. So I've had to make do with a ramp on this side and round here, cause I needed the extra height. I've um, chocked her up on a big rock there. So anyway, how is it in there, mate? Not, not gonna roll out of bed? Nah, nah, we're pretty good. <laughs> That'll do me, eh? Get a fire crank in here in the Savo, watch the sunset. This is bloody nice, mate. Coppin's Gap. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Where are we going, mate? We're gonna head down to. Where are we? Coppin's Gap. Oh, sorry. God, I'm <laughs> shocking. Well, we change bloody destinations every day, I know, just about. Right? I know. Coppin's, like... well, yeah, we're going down into Coppin's Gap. There's this beautiful gorge, little waterhole down there. Vans are just here. The van, sorry, is just here. And I reckon it's probably not even 100 metres no. to get there. So, wow, how good is this? Look at that. See? That's, That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Oh, so cool down here too. Whoa. It feels like it's about 40 degrees today. Look at that. You can see the reflection in there, mate. That's fresh. Hey, it's beautiful. Nice and fresh. Look at the colour of those cliffs up there, Jack. So this is Coppins Gab. It's not far from Marble Bar at all. And to be honest, I don't think we would have even come in here. We're such coastal beach bums. We love being on the coast, but you just got to come inland. I think we're all of two hours maybe inland. And you get these gorgeous places all yourself. And we're just up the top of the hill there is where we're staying. And it's, sunset's going to be mint. It's just beautiful to have it all to yourself. 
these gorgeous remote locations in Outback Australia are really kicking some ass. Tell me your favourite part about Coppins Gap. Um, the the fresh water. Ah, yeah. uh, the rocks. The rocks. That our home's just up the road there. That's pretty sick, isn't it? <laughs> That's my favourite part. Oh, <laughs> finally, what's up, Jack? What's your favourite part about Coppins Gap? My favourite part is swimming in the water with my best dad ever. <laughs> oh, jeez, oh, you know what to say, mate. Get hey? the violin out. <laughs> <laughs> Extra pocket money for you, pal. Hello, morning from Coppins Gap. Um, a little bit special. Look at this, the Lion King. 6.30 in the morning. Huh? <laughs> anyway, we all got up early for some reason. I don't know why. But anyway, I'll take you outside to show you this. Because this is pretty bloody special. Coppins Gap at sunrise. Now, these cliffs are just going to turn wickedly red. But uh, so many birds here. You can hear them down in the gap there, and it's so cool, it's like echoing. So it's just really loud, it's like playing in surround sound. So I'll go down and get some audio of that and show you, because it's pretty cool. I'm loving it. Anyway, today the plan is to head to Padu Station, and there's two ways to get there. We can go back out this road and along the highway, which is 250 k's, or we can take a shortcut I think it's called Goldsworthy Road, which is 150 k's, but you know them things when you get on Google Maps? You go, oh yeah, it's 100 k shorter, that should be all right. Uh, <laughs> well, one trip says two and a half hours, the other trip says six and a half hours. So, how bad's that dirt road? All right, I need to know, mate, what is going on over here? What are you doing? Making a potion. Making a potion? Looks like it's just a massive mud pie. Hey, is that my favourite Milo cup? No. Are you serious? What am I going to drink my Milo out of now? You are a rat bag. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> you dead set rat bag. Oh man. Oh, good on you. Have fun, eh? I can't see the boys. You've been so quiet down here. What's going on? Oh, you gotta be quiet so your sister can't find you. Yeah. You know she's doing the same thing up there? Yeah. 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 Look at that. Is that my other favourite Milo cup? Oh, Are you so. making dirt <laughs> no, potion no. out of my Milo cups? No, um, we just used it. I think you are. No, so we just used it to get water. We are. <laughs> <laughs> We've just pulled up at the turn off to Anna Plains and uh, I'll tell you what, if you didn't know about it, you'd drive straight past it because there's not much to tell you it's here. We are a bit wrong with our bloody coordinates and kilometres. It was actually about 250 k's from Cape Caroid from where we were this morning. Make sure you look out for this. There's only one little sign, Anna Plains Station. Then there's this private access road over on the other side there. So unless you got told about it, like we're telling you now, you wouldn't bloody know it's here. So you've got to ring them up, you've got to get uh, permission from the owners. They've only got approval to run a few sites uh, as caravan sites, so make sure you ring them up first. And uh, we'll take you in here, it's about 15 k's down this road, and uh, we'll show you all about it. I'll tell you what, I don't know what we've come across, this bloody equator or some tropic of, I don't know, it has got five or six degrees hotter 
from Cape Groydron to here. Like, it is out of control. Can't wait. Private beach access, good fishing, and a good little station stay, I reckon. Come and check this out. What have we found, mate? It's a hot tub. <laughs> what an epic little setup. It's an artesian fed hot tub, and you just come and fill it up yourself. In the middle of the bush, mate, like about oh, five minutes from where we're staying. Yeah, how cool is it? You just drive down here, and then all we got to do, Jacko, is pull. You take that bit of pipe out of there. Yeah. Yep, just pull it off. This? Yep. Yeah. Slide that one off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then the water. Hey, there we go. Okay. Yeah. What do I do? Just leave it there. Just slide it out the other side. There you go. And that's filling up the hot tub. How good's that? Is it nice and warm? Yeah. yeah. I can feel the I now. <laughs> oh my He's straight in. There you go. And then when you're finished, um, all you have to do is uh, put the pipe back in. You've got to put a plug in. Here. You've got to put that bung in. Oh, yep. That goes in down there. Can you screw it in. All right, here we go. I'm gonna hold you in suspense as usual because we go to some pretty epic spots, but this one is 80 Mile Beach and we've got it all to ourselves. Look at this, the sun's going down, the tide's super far out. It's gonna be epic tomorrow. I'm gonna to come back down tomorrow and go fishing on high tide and see how we go. Parked up here, we're gonna have dinner here at Savo as the sun goes down. We're doing it pretty tough. I've got mud crab and coral trout for dinner. I know, it's a hard life, mate. Come and check these out, and look at this one, having a wine. Always having a wine. Oh, oh look where we are! How can look I Look at have these a wine? shells, mate. Hey. How good! Kids literally collected these in about ten minutes. Is that oh, many bloody it's shells? Pretty specky. Here? You can't take any home because yeah. it's a um, it's a conservation area. But there's not many beaches around Oz. You find so many big shells in such good condition. Yeah. I think it's pretty where awesome, we are mate. Too, it's not very populated. Whereas a bit further yeah. back actual 80 mile beach they're a bit shellless yeah so this is 80 mile beach it's just the very northern end of it and we have got it all to ourselves on bloody real and the caravan's only 10 minutes away which goes all right cheering well there you go mate that is the sunset at 80 mile beach what do you reckon of that it's honestly the bee's knees oh wow you just so it's amazing that is so, so good. good hey. So we're just actually talking about how, like our kids are so happy at the beach and it just makes it. When the kids are happy, the parents are happy, you can enjoy a glass of wine with some tunes, watch that go down and these rugrats <laughs> are having a ball. So It's so good, eh? So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, to have this place all to, oh, hang on, there's someone way out there. Oh, really? So we're not the only ones here. But to have this place, to have your own bit of beach where no one can hear you sing, no one can see you dance, no one can see you carry on, no you one can see your missus in the nude. He's like, woo! <laughs> no one can see you poo. Oh, I don't oh, know about that, Jack. Goodness, anyway. no. Um, but yeah, it's nice to get it on your own, and it's pretty rare these days too. So, yeah. geez, it's nice. And when you can top it off with a backdrop like that, hooey, it goes all right. Hey, um, if you've been following our travels and you see we use this induction cooker, right? All running off the battery system but it's got different settings so anywhere from 200 watts to 2000 watts i'm cooking uh shallow fried fish so we've got cold trout i mix it up a good beer batter drop it in in little pieces you know and cook it but um to take the guesswork out of it 1300 is the setting so 1300 watts is perfect for cooking fish bites so you know how sometimes with beer batter it's hard if it's too hot, burns the crap out of your batter, but your fish ain't right in the middle. Um, well, I've got it down to a T because I use this for cooking fish all the time because it's outside, you're not heating up the van inside, and it doesn't matter if you spit oil and stuff around. So, anyway, if you're going to run an induction system, uh, we have had heaps of interest in it. Uh, anyway, 1300. It's a ripper, mate. And we've cooked, I cooked the kids bloody two minute noodles for dinner. I've had this cranking, and uh, we're down to about 85% of the battery power. By the time we drive home for the night, should be back up to near 100%. It's a sick little system, mate. Eh? Hot tip. See ya.
another great thing to do on Addy Mole Beach, and this stretch of beach is renowned for it, is fishing, and uh, not only for any fish, but the mighty threadfin salmon. I've actually never caught a decent one, but this beach, uh, the people that come here a lot, especially down further at 80 Mile, they set up on the right tide, on the right day, and they clean up on big meter long food pins. So hopefully, we've got a couple of baits out. We'll sit here for a few hours, eh, Beck? Yeah. See if we can't manage to get one of these bloody thread fin off 80 Mile Beach. So, uh, I have eaten it before, and I reckon it's better eaten than Barra. So, if we can get a couple, I'll show you how it's done. But, who cares? Look at this spot, mate. If we don't catch a fish, still pretty bloody lucky. We're sitting on this beach here. A few other cars up the top here. We've got this little patch all to ourselves. Pretty stoked with that, eh? You. What's for lunch, mate? Me? Yeah. I'm having tuna and salad. Kids have got peanut butter and jam sangers. Yeah. Woo! And you're having... I love this. Eh? Everyone else gets sorted. I'm like, hey dear, I'm pretty hungry too. No, you're having um, vegemite and cheese um, crustcuts. Oh yeah? Vegemite and cheese crustcuts. Jeez, I won out there, didn't I? <laughs> well, I better catch myself a fish. He'll cook up pretty damn good, pretty fresh, eh? Hey? Just smack the little stick bait. Can't get anything on the bait out there. I've got two baits, one on a float, one on the bottom. Third cast for this and little stick bait. Bang. I found this. Hey? Yeah, Jack found that lure in the mangroves about six weeks ago. So, here we go. What are you gonna do with these, but make sure you bleed them. So cut their throats and uh, wash them out. Otherwise they've got a big yucky bloodline in the fillet when you try and cook them. So we I'll do that now. That? Yeah, we'll keep that, yeah. Are you gonna bait it or are we gonna eat it? No, what do you mean bait it? Like as in for bait? No, we'll eat it. Yeah. yeah. Dad. Give us a good salmon recipe. <laughs> We're back on the road this morning heading out of Anaplane Station and we're going up to a place we've never been before on the west coast. We've driven past it a few times um, and we don't know whether we're making a good decision or not. Do we, dear? Yeah, thanks to, uh, <laughs> again, Wiki Camps reviews. I feel like some people just go on Wiki Camps to... Vent their frustrations, yeah, you know? Like, if you have a good time, you just you just drive off, you know what I mean? So. But here it is. Yeah. Look, you'll see a little sign saying Portsmouth Lagoon. Portsmouth on there, you turn off and it's a 23 kilometre stretch of dirt heading down to the coast. Now, um, don't know what the road's like yet, don't know what the caravan park's like yet, um, but what I do know is that I'm just about out of fuel and the only place to get it between uh, the Sandfire Roadhouse and Broome yeah. is either Portsmouth or back down the road there's an Aboriginal community. But so I believe this road is 23 kilometres and guess how many kilometres Justin has on his? Two. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it's uh, the fuel sensor's out of cow because if it's only two then we'll be sitting on the road here waiting for someone to help us out with the jerry can. <laughs> but I reckon we'll be all right. I think because uh, we did some beach work yesterday uh, and it sort of readjusts for that hard soft sand beach work and now we're back on the highway it's a bit out of whack but anyway we'll see, we'll see how we go we'll get in here show you around it's supposed to be good fishing um but if we believe all the comments we've seen the midges are like hell the caravan parks is shite hole the dust and, bowl. and the lagoon caravan park is a kilometer away yeah the lagoon bit i mean but hey we always see the bright side of things let's we go do. and have a look we've you've never seen see, it you've got to see everything for yourself though because we heard we've heard some shocking stories and we got in there and we're like oh this is job. awesome yeah. so anyway a quick one it can all depend on the people you meet yeah. too sometimes Absolutely. it, can and be, the it doesn't matter yeah. if it's an absolute hot dusty rubbish yeah. place to yeah. camp if you've got a good crew yeah. and you can have a beer and a laugh uh it can turn into one of your best spots so exactly let's go and have a look this is us 23 k's So the best thing to do when you stay at Portsmouth is to come down to the lagoon. Jesus. Hey? Oh, it's hot, hot. West Australian famous Portsmouth Lagoon. And look at that. Look at the colour of the water. There's wow. bloody things here in the view. Um, yeah, so we're going to go down here for a look. Apparently the fishing's pretty good. At low tide you can go and uh, get a few muddies as well. Same as everywhere along here. But check it out. We might 
dip in here for a bit of a swim with the kids, I reckon. You wanna go for a swim, kids? Yep. Yep. Hell yeah. 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 Look at this. On low tide, it's different again. You can come down and walk out to the end of the mangroves and fish the channel. So. Do you want to tell everyone what you just paid for fuel? Oh yeah. I just um. Oh, I don't know if I can bring myself to pay it. I just paid a dollar ninety nine for fuel. Oh. So, but hey, it is what it is. Oh my god, this is beautiful. But this is beautiful. Look at this. You can come down for a swim. Oh wow. Would you believe this is at the Portsmouth Lagoon? <laughs>
It is dead set, bucket list stuff. A few travels around. Oh, look at that, I've even got a seagull coming in. Oh, mate, and who better to do it with than this tidy rig? It was her birthday yesterday. We had a good day. We're still celebrating. I'm no romantic, but. Alright, enjoy this. See ya. This heading off cable, hey? I told you you had to drive, those didn't sunsets. I? Oh. I know. Well, it's your turn tomorrow night. Oh. So. Oh, I ain't going anywhere tomorrow night. <laughs> there you go. This camel's going home after a hard day's work. Mm. Hey. Bloody good spot, mate. I tell you. I've it. said it time and time again. I'll put a light on so you can see me. You get out of Cable Beach for a sunset. Win on! You won't regret it. Justin reckons I sing a lot. You do? Like, I go, winner! And I say, <laughs> no, I, like... I can't... She can't say anything on camera without going, camera, Dinner! Cable like, beach! Jesus, can you just He's like, talk? stop singing! <laughs> and I just did it then, I just realised, I was like, what did I say? Dinner! No, I said, winner! Sunset. Oh, winner! <laughs> awesome is this mate check out the color of this water <laughs> this is town beach in Broome the caravan park is just here there's our van there you'll spot it up next to the palm tree you just come down here on high tide and have a look at the color of this water mate keep winding Bill oh I think the young fella's got a snag anyway I don't know if we're gonna catch anything but it doesn't get much more scenic than this here we go mate is that the first fish yet or what uh, no. no. <laughs> but I got, I got um, stuck in something. Oh, well, keep trying. We'll go and see how Billy's going. You want a snag, Bill? I'll tell you, fishing with kids. I, I don't know how to explain it, but um, you need plenty of patience on that much. <laughs> anyway, Discovery Park's broom. Make sure you check it out if you want to get a beachfront site and be able to chill out and watch this, mate, from the back of your caravan. I'll tell you. Doesn't get much better than right there. Just make sure you book ahead. It's a bloody busy spot. Very popular. Oh, I'm gonna retie a few rigs. So a cool little thing to do when you come into Broome is find Streeter's jetty. Make sure you do it on high tide and uh, don't go swimming. Hey. <laughs> Crocodiles in here. Oh, there would be. I haven't seen any. But look at the colour of the water. It's pretty bloody specky. Hey. What do you reckon? Good little walk. And if you bring little kids, you might want to make sure because they might want to. They might pull in. Yeah, they might want to swim down here. Because they've got. They haven't got any bars or anything to. Like, hold on. Good tour guide, Jack. Well done. And that's it. There's the jetty. Not very long. And I wish Only like a 40 meter walk back up the start there. What do you reckon? Go and get a coffee or an ice cream? Oh, uh, ice cream. Ice cream? Yeah, me too. Hey, what's your favourite? Mine's rum and raisin. How good's that gear? Yeah, I kind of like rum and raisin too. <laughs> good man. Right, let's do it. Righto, so today's mission is uh, Willy Creek fishing mate. We're gonna go chase a couple of barra in a rooftop of tinny. So I met a bloke on the road, his name's George. He's got a 370 traveler. And uh, we're gonna go to a spot up here called Willy Creek. I've fished it a lot before, but only off the bank. And I've always wanted to get out here in the tinny because I reckon there's some 
good fish hiding out up here when the water gets high. So, go and throw a few plastics around, see what we can't catch, eh? Look at this, first good fish in the boat. What a, look at that mate, big estuary cod. Check this out then, it's gob. Look at that, it's got a full oki in its bloody guts, man. Oh, yeah. on the Barra Classic. Yeah. Look at this, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish, hey? Well done, on the troll, mate, Willie Creek. <laughs> oh, dinner time. A nice little gold on the trail, same lure. Barra Classic doing the job. Yeah, here we go. Last cast of the day. Swing around here. Big George, mate, put us under the hole. He goes, there'll be fish under that for sure. Third cast. Here we go. What have we got? Oh, look at this. Oh, he's been shark too. Oh, no. Down. Nice trevally. <laughs> That's like a diamond trevally or something. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Jump. Hey, what the hell? I didn't even feel that. She just clean cut. Let's go again. That one's vexed. We'll get that one vexed. Yeah, well, here we go. Good couple of hours out. Tinny's back on. Jeez, that's a fair mission, eh? The roof topper. When you've got to lug it all the way from the water down there. No barra, but that's all right. We've got a good cod, a couple of good trevally, and a few other fish. Good fun, mate, eh? Bit of trolling, bit of soft plastic fishing, and a wicked spot to come and hang out the tinny for a while. Throw a few lines around. And uh, now I'll go home and have a couple of well-deserved beers, don't you worry about that. Good stuff, Willie Creek, check it out. All right, so when I've got the kids on my own and I'm struggling for ideas, what do we do? Make fruit faces. Make so fruit faces, look at this. Teeth, Gives us drunk. hours of fun, hey? Kids yeah. are stoked. So like this. Look so at I've that. So where's teeth, your mouth? Oh yeah. Teeth, mouth, trunk. Oh, that's got a hey. That's are you doing a portrait of mum? Mm. <laughs> and then uh, trunk, then nose, like eyes, eyes, and then ears. What about yours, Bill? What's this one? Mm. Is he got strawberry teeth? Uh, yeah. Yep. I like it. Cool. What about yours? Name oh, that mommy. one's awesome. What's its name? Mummy and Daddy married. Mummy and Daddy married. That's a funny name for fruit face. What about yours? What's his name? Um, Song. Song. <laughs> Good one. What song. about yours? Not song. Um, song. the triple decker banana. The triple decker banana face. Good job. Good right. work adding the face on the end. Can I have the rest of this? Oh no. <sighs> All right. Eat up. Nom 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 nom. Oh wait. So I'm going to show you. A little fishing spot here in Broome. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but uh, it's pretty bloody nice. Should be able to figure out. It's only um, about 35 minutes from Cable Beach Caribbean Park. I've done all right here over the years fishing with some barra and jacks. Um, it's been a bit quiet this time because I think the water temp's too cold, the locals are telling me, but this is my go-to. It's a squidgy slick rig, 80 mil in the drop bear, and uh, get a pair of scissors. Just cut another bit of a wedge out of the bottom there. What that does, it just makes this work harder the slower you roll it. So you've got to be careful up here too, as much as it doesn't feel like there's crocs around. Uh, there is. So it's handy to carry like a long spin stick. This is a 10 foot stick. It's like, what is it, 6 to 10 kilo? Yeah. 4,000 stratic, 30 pound braid, and uh, a decent, like, I like the slick rig plastics because you can actually throw them a fair distance. You don't want to be getting down next to that water there, right? Eh? I'll show you in a minute, someone's lost their cast net here and they wouldn't have wanted to go in it after it at high tide either, so. Ah, well, I'm bloody sorry. <laughs> I'm a shit fisherman. Oh, but what do you do? That's fishing, I suppose. I did not even get a bite, mate. Sat there until half an hour after the sun's gone down. Fished hard the whole time. Looked good, there's plenty of action going on, but just couldn't get a bite on the plastic, mate, so. Anyway, um, what I can do, show you a bit about the spotlights on my car so it's one of the questions we get asked a bit about our gear uh what spotties are on the front they're the arb intensity lights 
um, and I'll show you what it's like driving home this track uh, with and without a mod because I tell you, we don't use them too often because we try not to drive at dawn and dusk. It's the worst time to drive because there's always bloody uh, cows and camels and horses and emus and whatever else you want to find always seem to hang out at those times of day on the road. So we don't try and drive then, but I do do a lot of early morning fishing missions and I uh, come home late after the sunset and stuff. And I tell you what, they're bloody handy to have on board. Red hot. Red hot. And I tell you what, they make the front of your car look should we go as well. Alright, so a few more things to do around Broome while you're here. I'm going to start with a really good spot to stay. We always stay at the Cable Beach Caravan Park. So heaps of shade in there. It's a massive joint. Heaps of room for the kids to ride their bikes. It's got one of the best bloody resort style pools you'll find in any caravan park around the country. So be sure to pull in there for a few days and check it out before you go exploring. Absolute must is check out the gorgeous Gampion Point. It's probably only about 10 minutes from Cable Beach itself. It's a must do when you're in the Broome area. You can check out the dinosaur footprints, but hot tip, go on low tide and the kids will have a ball checking them out. Also head to Town Beach, they've got a free water park there. Town Beach itself is really, really pretty. They've got a cafe on site there. And just over from the water park is the Town Beach Market. So they're on a Thursday night. They're also a good one to check out too. There's a museum in town. There's Matzo's Brewery. Uh, Divers Tavern's also a good one. And be sure to check out the Mangrove Hotel. They do a wicked wood-fired pizza with an awesome view over the water. Also a good spot to check out the uh, sunset to the... Staircase to the moon. <laughs> So another absolutely beautiful spot to check out. If you're a sucker for landscapes, you've got to go and check out Roebuck Bay. It is absolutely incredible. Yep. You get the beautiful red pink sand, gorgeous blue ocean, the cliffs. Pack yourself some lunch and head down and check it out. It was beautiful. good, mate. We spent a couple of hours down there. Hot tip is you head back out of town, mm. I don't know, maybe 10 minutes and take Crab Creek Road and then follow your nose to the coast and you'll find uh, some wicked spots to pull up, eh? So, Knock your socks off. Mate, absolute insanity. And that brings us to the end of that mega at Port Hedland to Broom. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Hope you enjoyed that. Had a couple of wines while you watched it. And threw a few notes down for your own travels next time you get up that way because it is dead set one of our favourite places. I know that I say that about everything, but it is bloody fantastic up there, isn't it? Australia's so massive though that it really is so many good spots. Anyway, um, next up we'll be like, we'll keep an eye out for the build series because they're going to keep coming out on the new car. And then um, we've done a bit of a walk around this new van. So we'll show you what's involved, the stuff we put in it inside and out, um, to give you a bit of an idea about what we're doing over the next 12 months. So anyway, see you later. Keep the comments and feedback coming because we love it, eh? We do. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.